In this age of mechanical efficiency, with more than 14 million new cars coming into the world every year, thousands of motorists are getting their pleasure out of the models of yesterday. They choose to turn back to the days when the motor car was a highly temperamental and elegant curiosity, affectionately referred to, except when the thing had to be pushed, as she. Of all the motoring fraternity, this is the most enthusiastic section. Today, members of nearly a hundred veteran and vintage car clubs throughout Britain show off their cars at every opportunity. This elegant little 1913 Humberette, which cost £145 new, has still only motored 8,000 miles, and over the last eight years has won 24 prizes. Cars must be in running order, well turned out, and conform to their original specification as far as possible. While the disposal of 10 and 20 year old cars is becoming a national problem, this passion for collecting really old vehicles has rocketed prices of veteran cars to as much as 10 times their original cost. At yards like this one in Berkshire, old croc enthusiasts search for the prize that will probably require hundreds of hours of hard work to restore. Like this old timer. Looks pathetic, doesn't it? But with plenty of love and patience, it could become a little beauty once more. Spare parts for old vehicles are a major problem, and inquiries come in from all over the world. There are even traction engines for the man who likes his engineering heavy. And for a thousand pounds or more, there's a 15-seat 1897 London bus in good running order. An engineering firm in Surrey has its own old fire engine club. When the day's work is finished, club members move across to the workshop and get on with their hobby. They're completely rebuilding a 1914 model and they keep a 1929 and another 1914 fire engine in running order. With brass shining and paint cleaning, one of these old timers is swung into action for a job. But she doesn't fight fires anymore. Although fully operational, nowadays she sets off at a fine clip to lend colour to fetes, rallies, and to help the local mayor on ceremonial occasions. The Model T Ford was the first mass-produced car in the world, and during its production from 1908 to 1928, just over 15 million were built. This 1912 model is still used as a general runabout in East Anglia. Mr. Douglas Fitzpatrick, a Norfolk veteran car enthusiast, is particularly proud of his 200 horsepower 1907 sports car. With its 21 litre engine, this car will still cruise at 100 miles an hour. Petrol consumption, up to 11 miles to the gallon. And even in 1907, they had a simple device for dipping headlamps. Veteran cars are popular around this house. With a fleet of six in the garage, each worth well over a thousand pounds, Mr. Fitzpatrick usually sets off to his nearby farm in his 1906 Wolseley Siddeley. He prefers this car because it's so high. He can see over the hedges as he drives along. Vintage cars from 1914 to 1930 and later date thoroughbred sports cars have their own club with nearly 5,000 members and they hold regular race meetings. 170 entries turned up for a wet afternoon sport at Silverstone. And all the well-known makes of pre-war motor racing days were there. Alfa Romeo, Bentley, Bugatti, Fraser Nash, Delage and many others. Thirty-six vintage and thoroughbred sports cars line up for the one-hour high-speed trial, 
ranging from 1922 to 1939 models. And they're off. Most of these old timers, which lapped the mile and a half club circuit at 60 to 70 mile an hour, are still in daily use as general runabouts. Some of them are the sole family car used for long continental tours as well as racing. The second Lord Montague of Bewley was a pioneer of motoring in Britain. He bought his first car in 1898. And his son, the present Lord Montague, has made the family house at Bewley in Hampshire a meeting place for veteran and vintage car enthusiasts from all over the world. As the cars stream through the tiny village for a rally on the estate, other visitors arrive with veteran cars shipped from America, South Africa, and a strong contingent from the continent. The Montague Motor Museum, started in 1952, is now the biggest collection of antique cars in the country, with more than a hundred vehicles, including motorcycles and bicycles. Nearly half a million people visit the museum every year. All the exhibits are kept in running order and are periodically taken out for rallies, racing and pioneer runs. The oldest is an 1895 one horsepower British car with a top speed of eight miles an hour. The museum workshop keeps the vehicles in their original condition, making parts when spares cannot be found. For the whole point of this veteran car craze in a world of increasing standardization is to put the clock back, to recapture the simplicity and style of early motoring. This is best seen in the annual London to Brighton run, when many competitors even wear clothes of the period of their car for the 50 mile jaunt. One hundred and fifty veteran cars come from all over the world for this now famous event. It commemorates the original trip made by pioneer motorists in 1896 to celebrate their newly won freedom, the abolition of the four mile an hour speed limit. Not all the old timers reach Brighton, of course, but the incredible thing is that most of them do. And as they go on their way, their cavalcade is a reminder of a remarkable chapter of progress, which has all happened in a lifetime. 